All right, the Rabbit R1 just got announced the other day at CES. And it's, I mean, the Twitter and the internet went crazy. Tech went all over it. And I wanna break down the keynote that was delivered and show you why there were some really good things and why I thought there were some misses. So if you're doing a product launch, a keynote like this, you can do it better. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually watch this. I'm gonna break it down as we go so that you can see exactly where it goes good and where it goes wrong. Now, I'm gonna tell you, I love that they're taking big swings and trying to do something really interesting with the technology. Whether or not it becomes useful and, and works, we'll see. But I love big swings inside of tech. So this is just a way for you to get better because I'm definitely gonna give some, some criticism here in terms of how it was delivered, but I also wanna say a lot of things were done really well. So let's get in and I'll break it all down. I'm so excited to be here today to present you two things we've been working on. A revolutionary new foundation model and a groundbreaking consumer mobile device powered by it. So I'm gonna start with just the hook, right? We have this idea of a revolutionary new model and groundbreaking. These are very, these are cliche terms at this point. And I understand why they were used, but as soon as I hear them, I'm just like, oh, another one. So the initial bit is the hook. I would make it stronger, right? This is something that I would find synonyms or different word choice to bring it to life because everybody in tech talks about revolutionary. Everybody in tech talks about groundbreaking. And if you talk like everyone else, you're just like everyone else. And so that's why I say I would just change those little pieces up. But I think from like a tone and the way he's carrying himself here does a really good job. Our mission is to create the simplest computer, something so intuitive that you don't need to learn how to use it. The best way to achieve this is to break away from app-based operating system currently used by smartphones. Instead, we envision a natural language-centered approach. This is great right here because what he's doing is he's setting up the old world and the new world. The old world is an app-based approach and this new world is a language-based approach. And they're gonna do something really interesting later on where they actually name the new game. It's really, really smart. It no longer is an LLM, it's an LAM, a large language action model, right? And it's, it's quite interesting to see how they coined that term. Super powerful, like owning a name is one of the greatest things you can do in a product launch inside of your company especially at a big keynote like this. The computer we're building, which we call a companion, should be able to talk to, understand, and more importantly, get things done for you. The future of human machine interfaces should be more intuitive. Now, before we get started, let's take a look at the existing mobile devices that we use daily. The one device that's in your pocket, the smartphones, like iPhone, and Android phones. These guys been here for years and we've grown tired of them. The problem with these devices, however, is not the hardware phone factor, it's what's inside. The app-based operating system. Want to get a ride to the office? I'm gonna call out something here to be aware of, right? When you are delivering this, there's a little bit of an overuse of the hands. Now, hand gestures are great but there's too much where they're always here. It's here, 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 over and over and over and over again. You've gotta be more comfortable doing different things, right? Let them relax, move in circles, let them move dynamically. Hand gestures are an easy way to create different feelings inside of the way that you are speaking, right? So one of my friends, Marshall Davis Jones, is an incredible spoken word artist. He wrote the book, Tonal Influence. And if you talk to him, he'll tell you about how when we're rolling our hands, we speak differently than when we're pointing like this or when we're chopping. And using your hands then becomes a tool to create different dynamics in your voice. It also is a way to make the message more interesting because if you keep doing the same thing over and over and over, everyone knows that the term monotone, right? Where the tone is always the same or mono pace, where it's always the same pace. Well, the same can be said with your, your hands. Right? If you constantly do the same thing, it lands flat. So this to me was a little bit over hand gestured and needed a little bit more relaxation into the message. Now I get why it's nerve wracking and tough. This is, is no knock on that, but it could have been worked on to be a little bit more polished and a little bit smoother. There's an app for that. Want to buy groceries? There's another app for that. 
Each time you want to do something, you fumble through multiple pages and folders to find the app you want to use. And there are always endless buttons that you need to click. Add to the cart, go to the next page, check the boxes, and jumping back and forth, and so on. The smartphone was supposed to be intuitive. But with hundreds of apps on your phone today that don't work together, it no longer is. If you look at the top of ranking apps on app stores today, you'll find that most of them focus on entertainment. Our smartphones has become the best device to kill time instead of saving them. That's a brilliant line right there. Whoever wrote that, tip, tip, tip of the hat to that, right? What a beautiful line that, that our, our smartphones have become the best way to kill time, not save time. That right there is an absolute plant the flag kind of moment. That is like a calling card. That is a rallying cry, beautifully done. Like I, when I watched this, that was the line that stood out to me the most, the first time I, I watched this. And for your sake, think about that one line that you can deliver inside of a big keynote that people are gonna remember. And that right there tells me why I should care about what they're doing long-term. And it's actually why I'll continue to follow what they're doing there because I, agree that line resonated with me so deeply that I really did feel it. It's just harder for them to do things. Many people before us have tried to build a simpler and more intuitive computers with AI a decade ago. Companies like Apple, Microsoft, and Amazon made Siri, Contana, and Alexa with these smart speakers. Often, they either don't know what you're talking about or fail to accomplish the tasks we ask for. Recent achievements in large language models, however, or LLMs, a type of AI technology, have made it much easier for machines to understand you. The popularity of LLM chatbots over the past years has shown that the natural language-based experience is the path forward. However, where these assistants struggle is still getting things done. For example, if you go to the ChatGPT and use their Expedia plugin to book a ticket, it can suggest options, but ultimately cannot assist you in completing the booking process from start to finish. Things like ChatGPT are extremely good at understanding your intentions, but could be better at triggering actions. Another hot topic is a field of research around what they call agents. It has caught the eye of many open source projects and productivity software companies. What's good here is getting out in front of some of the possible competitors or some of the objections. Dealing with them and, and saying, here's why these aren't good solutions. And he's gonna get into the agents issue right now, but it, it's well done, right? And it sets it up so that when he gives the reveal of what they can do, it becomes a very clear light bulb of, oh, I understand why they're different and why they're taking this approach. So again, really well done here. What remains to be solved is for these agents to perform tasks end to end, accurately and speedily. The problem is forcing a model to perform a task it is not designed for, whether for a language model to reason about web page using super prompts or screenshots. We have yet to produce an agent as good as users simply clicking the buttons. To fulfill our vision of a delightful intuitive companion, we must go beyond a piece of complex software. We want it to be in the hands of everyone. So we first set out to fundamentally understand how computer apps are structured, and more importantly, how humans interact with them. We wanted to find a way for our AI to trigger auctions on behalf of users across all environments. We want it to be universal, not just a Chrome plugin or a limited set of apps, but everything, iOS, Android, and desktop. These applications share something in common, the interface. They all have a user interface. So at a philosophical level, if we can make an AI trigger actions on any kind of interface, just like a human would, we will solve the problem. This insight led us to create the large action model, or LAM, as we call it. 
So this is the big change, right? Where they go from large language model to large action model. It's super smart naming. This is the new game as they, they are gonna put it. So well done. Again, whoever came up with the idea, super smart, well done, capitalizing on what people actually care about, right? Which is getting things done. So I, I love this bit right here. I love the reveal. I think it makes total sense. Great job on this. It is new foundational model that understands and executes human intentions on computers, driven by our research in neural symbolic systems. With a large action model, we fundamentally find a solution to the challenges that apps, APIs, or agents face. We solve it with interfaces. LAM can learn any interfaces from any software, regardless of which platform they're running on. In short, the large language model understands what you say, but the large action model gets things done. Another great line right there, right? Large language models understand what you say, large action models understand what you want to get done. Really great job there. Now again, I'm gonna call out one more time. You'll see the hands, they're always here talking the entire time, right? <clears throat> you would never talk like this the entire time where your hands are just in this, this area. You would talk here, you'd have them relax, you'd have them down, you move them up, move them down. That's more of that flow, right? That's more of that comfort inside of it. And so what it ends up feeling like here is more of a performance and less of a conversation with the audience. Now, I'm gonna tell you the keynote is, is really quite well done. The, the scenery, the flow between everything, really smart up to this point. And like, again, hats off to them. Like the, we haven't had a ton of great keynotes since Steve Jobs was out there. And this is a, a really great attempt. So not trying to tear down, but there's some ways that this could have been, you know, 10 times better where it just would have absolutely floored everybody had that delivery have been nailed perfectly. We use LAM to bring AI from words to action. Finally, we can build a computer that in addition to understanding what you're trying to say, can actually help you do things on your behalf. We'll pack the large action model into an advanced Rabbit OS operating system. It is built for real-time interactions between you and the Rabbit powered by LAM. Large action models concept and test results are so powerful that we decided to make a one-of-a-kind mobile device. Introducing R1, your pocket companion. To me, the reveal here, where it goes now into the product demo, is a little bit weak, right? It's just introducing this, right? And if we actually go back, right, that final line. It is built for real-time interactions between you and the rabbit, powered by LAM. Large action models concept and test results are so powerful that we decided to make a one-of-a-kind mobile device. Introducing R1, your pocket companion. Right, so you can see it there. There could have just been a smoother kind of setup where it is really kind of laying it up. This feels a little bit predictable and the predictability loses some of that punch, right? He could have led into that a little bit more with people want something that does the action that they're looking for. Well, we finally have your answer and then you just press play on the product demo and it shows it, right? It's essentially doing like a dot, dot, dot to pull them into it. If you think about it from like a Star Wars, it's the a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, dot, dot, dot. And then you get the boom and it's Star Wars, right? Same could have been done here, where is that bigger kind of reveal that leads to the gasp, right? Because great storytelling always has surprise. And this lacked a little bit of that surprise in the way that it was delivered. Now. I'm not gonna watch the entire product demo. You can certainly watch that and go through that. Because what I'm gonna say is, once we get through the product demo, this is where I actually think that the keynote drags too much. They, they try to show too many different things that it can do. So if you look at it, right, the product demo ends roughly at 7.30 in. And then for the next 10 minutes, 12 minutes, 14 minutes, we're just getting into, it just is consistently the like different use cases. And all that could have been condensed down because 
They haven't gotten to pricing yet. And pricing is actually one of the big selling points to this. And when I was watching all of the things I can do, it really wasn't that, that interesting at, in, in the moment. Like I understood the idea once I saw the first one. And I just want to know what's it cost. And the reality is I would have just turned it off, right? And so what happens is oftentimes we have like a really high start and then we get in the middle, it drags and people will turn it off. And this happens with shows and movies and books all the time where people just stop them in the middle because the middle drags so much they don't even care enough to get to the end. In this case, the end is the price. And so if I were them, I would have either condensed the examples inside of the product demo and save that for maybe a different, uh, a different video to give more of the product demo, or I would have put pricing earlier and then showed some of the different demo possibilities of what it can do because it loses some of that focus to me in the way that it goes. So now I'm gonna fast forward as we get a little bit further into this. A global 4G LTE SIM card, a push to talk button and an analog scroll wheel. One last thing, what about a price? So you see one last thing, what about the price? And we don't get that until 24 minutes into the keynote. And how many people are gonna stick around for 14 minutes or 16 minutes of just demo stuff? that like was nice to see, but it wasn't anything super crazy on here. So you just gotta get to the point sooner. Now, before we reveal our price, I want to do a quick comparison. Here are some of the best phones on the market right now. Again, here you have this, before we get to our price, I want to compare some of them. Just go into it. Instead of telling me what you're gonna do, just pull up and say, hey, traditional iPhone, 999. Traditional other smartphone, 699. And then Alexa and all of these other are 299, 399, 499, whatever it is, it could have been much quicker, right? Because like it lost, it was again, too much of like teasing out. So the keynote lost a lot of its steam the further on that it went, which means a lot of its power is gone. And so even when it got to the price, which is, you know, quite low. So if we fast forward, we get to this reveal that it's 199. Like I was already kind of checked out and I kind of lost all of that high emotion that I had at the beginning. And you don't want that when you have something especially as powerful as a low price of 199. Like that should be really compelling. So again, this is where the keynote could have been improved. This is where it could have been better. I love that they did it. I love that they're taking huge swings over at Rabbit. This is, is great to see. But if you're giving a product demo and you're giving that product keynote especially, you wanna make sure you keep attention. <clears throat> and you've gotta always be thinking through some of these classic structures of what is, what could be from Nancy Duarte, right? Or you have three acts to really hit people on. And you want to make sure that when it's going on, that you are getting the amount of buy-in throughout the entire time and really having these rise and falls. So you've got to make sure that high action, they're going to come down, bring the action back up as they come down, bring the action back up. You don't want these long periods of time where it just kind of drags. And that's unfortunately what happens here. Again, I would call this like a solid, you know, six and a half out of 10, if I were looking at this. Some small tweaks could take this to an eight or nine. A decent amount of work probably takes it to a 10. Uh, again, hat tip to the people who worked on this and took a big swing. Like I, I know this took a lot of work, really happy to see it come, come out. But I want you to give a 10 out of 10 when you're out there doing this. So those are my thoughts on the Rabbit R1 the keynote especially, how it was communicated, delivered, and if you're out there and you're a tech founder and you're planning on doing your own, make sure to take some of these lessons in mind and get it right because, I mean, this thing right now has 1.3 million views. So how valuable is 1.3 million views instead of a 6.5 out of 10? What if you had a 9.5 out of 10? What's that gonna lead to in sales? and also into the long-term value of your company. So those are the questions I'll leave you with. Go watch it, check it out for yourself, and uh, let me know when you do yours. Send it my way, and I'll do a breakdown just like this one.